live the life beyond the boundaries we set on ourselves. To live and to run boundless. To be inspired, to achieve, to overcome the mountaintop in our life. Embrace the journey, become boundless. Hello, Live Room Boundless family and another beautiful Saturday morning out on the trails. I'm uh, getting in, getting my sweat in. Everybody that know me the past few years around with me know that I sweat like my daddy. Um, so with that said, um, I, you know, I lose a lot of salt, and which is not good for me. Because you know, uh, I thought I'd be hurting big time, cramping up, hit the wall, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Um, one day I recommend I've been taking for, for a couple of years is a salt stick that I take on my run. Now I don't take the whole bottle, but I put a little Ziploc bag, you know. And so salt stick, the one for me, where place the electrolyte, you now prevent me from cramping up. Um, yeah, if you want to try salt stick, haven't tried and want to try it again, go to saltstick.com, do the discount code, uh, boundless21 and get 21% off, uh, your salt stick ta tablet. All righty. So hello, hello, family. Welcome to another episode of the Lil Run Ballers Show. Um, I'm your host, Kenneth Pinkney. And today, my guest co-host for the second time is Kimberly Garcia. Hello. Uh, yes. Happy to be here. Yes, definitely. Glad, glad to have you on again. So today, guest, it's a young woman that definitely stand out in the crowd and stand out on the trails also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is full of color and I had lived and continued to live a very colorful life. Right at her darkest moment in life or her brightest moment in life. Uh, I can say she had true testimony of overcome her obstacle in life and turn around to be a legend in the Usher trail running world and live a life to the fullest. Some of her many accomplishments in the trail running world uh, she's the first American woman to run 100, 100 mile races. Kind of wrap your head around that. Just wrap your head around that for a bit. Think about that for a moment. Uh, 100 miles, 100 times. That, that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's crazy. Uh, but she also, she podium in 64 ushers across the country. Um, she hold the FKT for a double run of the job. Mirror Trail over 400 miles in 12 days, four hours and 57 minutes. Um, for my San Diego people out there, my San Diego running family, she's the only woman to complete the San Diego 110 times. Wow, that keep coming back for more suffering, more suffering, more suffering. Uh, 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 definitely, it's a woman that who had discovered something and went all in with it and enjoying every moment of it. So family, let welcome the dirt diva herself, the colorful one, Ms. Katra, Katra Corbett. Well, Thank you. Wow, what an introduction. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you are good. That was the best introduction, I think, ever in a podcast for me. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Yeah, I've been there. Hey, you know, but that's... That hard, that the best way to describe you, you know, and you, you, is yep, awesome. colorful. I'm not super, well, I got color on today. Yeah, yeah, I guess yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, yes, you do, you know. And while, while, while I got the trail running magazine, you know, I um, mean, I saw you on the, 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 that front cover, I like to say, oh my goodness, I mean, I, I gotta reach out to her, you uh, <laughs> 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 know, so I, I saw you take a chance of uh, doing it, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, so. yeah, and I'm glad you did. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I appreciate your time, man, because you got you run a lot of miles. You got a lot of miles more to run. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Twenty yeah, plus yeah. years. So I know, I know. So before we get started, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm I am doing excellent. It's awesome in Bishop, Eastern yeah. Sierras. Beautiful place to live. I've been living yeah. here for three years, and oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's an amazing place to run, train, hike, backpack. Yeah. I mean, ah. we have it all. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it's 
Beautiful. We're just having heavy monsoon it just season here. So. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's a beautiful day out here for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So say that, Kim. Do you say um? Yeah. So I think everybody know your story. You know, the majority of everybody, you know, everybody know who you are. Um uh, you know, but I like to talk about the journey, the process of becoming the sure. person that you are. And that uh, the to become a person to be like some sort of guy to go to the valley in order to reach that peak. And you yep. have your, your valleys in life. So um, you didn't get my first question. Take us through the valley of your valley in life and how you, how you climb out of your valley. Sure. So I was not her. I hated, I was more of a party girl, you know, into hanging out at the clubs and all that stuff actually hated anything to do with sports. I mean, I was forced into sports growing up, but did not like it. My father was my coach for soccer and softball. And my parents felt like, oh, she needs to be in team sports. Or always by herself reading a book or out of her shell. Well, that was a big mistake for them. <laughs> but anyways, I came out of my sure. shell and I became this party girl, you know, like yeah. in high school, junior high school, and just yeah. was more into the club scene. And um, so once I got out of school and I, I, you know, went off to college and uh, took some classes and decided I was going to be a cosmetologist. So I got really, really into the party scene, hanging out at clubs and all of that. And kind of was drinking a lot and then got introduced to methamphetamines and yeah. started like my downhill hill spiral with that. And so I was heavily using for about three years. Yes. I feel blessed that it could have been longer. You know, it's yeah. like people get yeah. stuck, but I, know. Yeah. I ended up getting arrested for selling speed and I did a phone, uh, a sell over the phone. And so that's how I got involved. Me and my boyfriend, we were just selling it to our friends. It wasn't yeah, like we yeah, were some yeah. big time dealers. Yeah. So yeah. the guy yeah. that got arrested, he lied and said like we were big time dealers. So of yeah. course the police come in like in episodes of cops and yeah, they're thinking yeah. that they got these big time drug dealers and they realized that we weren't. And so we both got carted off to jail and yeah. lucky for me, I mean, at the time I had a really good uh, public defender and he was like, you know, normally in these cases, they give the woman, you know, and the, you know, the partner, both the same amount of time in jail. But since yeah. you have a job, since you've never been in trouble and all these things, mm. he said that most likely you'll get drug diversion. And so I was really lucky with that. But basically the, just spending the like day and a half in jail was enough to scare me straight. It really yeah. scared me. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. I, you know, sitting in a jail cell, I'm just like, what am I doing here? Like, how did I get here? Like, what is going, you know, what yeah. went wrong in my life to lead yeah. me here? So, yeah. so that was enough to scare me straight. So basically, yeah. Yeah. you know, getting the drug diversion, I mean, it was months of process going, yeah. you know, yeah. before I was finally sentenced, but I was going to NA Narcotics Anonymous and all of that. And so basically that was my downhill <laughs> before oh, yeah. I started the uphill. Yeah. So you know, and I was in a really good drug diversion program, okay. had a great therapist awesome. and was going to like yeah. Narcotics Anonymous and yeah. AA and realized like I had to ditch all those friends. Like yeah. you, once you quit, you got to quit those friends too, because yeah. you're yeah. going to get pulled back in. I mean, it was the, the minute I was out of jail, people were like, when are you, when are you going to get more drugs? Oh. <laughs> people oh, were like God. waiting to buy yeah. more speed and it, oh, wow. you know, and I did kind of hang out in that scene a little yeah. bit after, because yeah. I was just felt kind of lost at that yeah. point. Yeah. And I realized mm -hmm. these people are all screwed up, you know, that, and I was there too, but it was just like, I, I can't be around this anymore. Yeah like nothing in it. So I started working out in a gym while I was going through my drug diversion. And so was on my track to getting healthy. And right after I got out of jail, I had been talking about becoming a vegan as well. Yeah, and yeah. I was, a, I was a vegetarian since I was nine, okay. you know, I was, we yeah. raised animals yeah, and yeah. I named all of them and I was told <laughs> they're not pets, but <laughs> yeah. they were my pets to me. So yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why, you know, stopped eating beef and chicken okay. and things like that growing up. Yeah. And so finally, one of my, me, me and my friends were talking about, oh, like we're going to go vegan. You know, we just got to yeah. quit drinking, you know, dairy, yeah. doing dairy. Yeah. And that was pretty much yeah. it. Cause we were already they were <gasps> pretty much vegetarian. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just took that next step. The minute I got out of jail, I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, I'm not doing yeah, drugs. Yeah, I'm not yeah, drinking. Yeah. I'm not going to eat any more animals. So 
And yeah. it started from there. And yeah. so yeah. I was getting my head on straight, you know, d- doing stuff, you know, working out and all that. And two years in my sobriety, I decided one day this route that I always walked, I was going to run it with my little dog. Yes. So uh, actually, I didn't take him with me that time, <laughs> but I decided it was three miles and yeah. I'm going to run it. So I ran yeah. the three miles and felt fantastic. So that was my starting on my uphill. Yeah trajectory um okay, I, okay yeah so i i ran and then like you know i went out and i didn't even have running shoes so i had to go out and buy some shoes and yeah so i saw a flyer um this is like back in the day when there was no internet so, yeah, yeah, i mean yeah. there was internet but not like it is yeah. now this is back let's That's see that. 96 oh yeah so, i know i know. <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah <laughs> so i saw a flyer for a race a 10k coming up and yes. I have to remind you, I only ran three miles, like, okay, and yeah. that's the farthest I've run. And so it was a week later. So I had been running three miles, like mm-hmm. every day that week. And I decided I'm going to sign up for this 10K. So I signed up for the 10K, yes. ran that, didn't know. <laughs> all black, you know, running yeah. in black shorts, black shirt, yeah. you know, not, not even running clothes. It was just like, yeah. whatever, like some yeah. sweat suit kind of stuff so I finished that race and there was a flyer for the San Francisco marathon which was in three months so I ran one day 10k and then decided (sighs) I'm gonna run a marathon because you know I I knew growing up like the Boston marathon my father was a runner and he ran a marathon okay so I know watching that when I was growing up we used to watch it on tv and I was like ah, those people are amazing that do that shit you know sorry right I can cuss but (laughs) so I decided I called one of my friends and I'm like, Hey, Kevin, how far? Yeah, I know a marathon's yeah. like 20 something miles. How far yeah. is it? He's like 26.2. And I was like, I'm, a, I'm signing up for it. Yeah, it's in three yeah. months. So basically I did that. I signed up, bought you know, bought a book, um, had to figure out how I was going to train. I mean, I didn't know yeah. anybody that was a runner. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So book and I had to skip up to three, basically in the the book because it was a six, six months and it was like bam yeah, i have to yeah. go nine miles now and i've only gone yeah. Six. <laughs> yeah so i you know three months later i ran on and in the middle of the night 30 you know next you know it's like normally people don't think like that and I was already like, oh, I want to go to Hawaii and do the Honolulu Marathon, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I was running, actually, I was running next to some guy and yeah. he had run, you know, several marathons. And I, I said, have you run Honolulu? Because I had met like somebody, you know, giving out information about it at the, the race mm-hmm. uh, check-in. And he's like, you, you know, and he's all, yeah, I have. And he goes, but you haven't even finished your first one and you're already <laughs> thinking about a second one. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah why not? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I finished and my legs, you know, like the last, that last two miles, it was like, whoa, it felt like bricks yeah. on my leg. You know, it's like, yeah. I went from nothing to running a marathon and I, I kept waiting for something to happen. And I, oh. you know, the last mile and a half was the only time I felt like any kind of like stiffness fatigue oh, wow. setting in, you know, oh, after yeah. all the adrenaline wore off. So I, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems, seems so. So um, so your first marathon with Ashley went pretty, pretty well. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, I enjoyed it. So and I enjoyed it so much. I ran another one and, you know, within a few months later. And wow. by that time, like, you know, I had run two marathons. This was in, let's see, it was in June, yeah. July. July and so in December I ran my second one and then by January I was plotting my year I'm like I'm gonna run every marathon in California and that's after <laughs> was, running two marathons was and so that I was road or trail oh well let me th- that's what I'm gonna get to the introduction of trail running <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah because there was a lot of trail marathons so I started running all yeah. these marathons yeah. the bigger ones you know like rock and roll San Diego like all of the bigger mm-hmm. ones that they had and then I realized oh there's a lot of these trail marathons so there was I was in the Bay Area and in the San Francisco and the Marin Headlands, they, oh. there was this organization that put on a lot of marathons there. Yes. So I realized, well, I can't run every single marathon in California. There was just too many, even at that time, there was a lot. Yeah. So, but I was like, I'm going to run it as many as I can. And realizing that this organization put on all these trail marathons, I can like knock out multiple 
<laughs> races. And so yeah. I, you know, show up for my very first trial marathon and it was like pouring rain, like mm -hmm. uh, surf advisory. I mean, I'm talking, mm -hmm. it was coming down and I, my mom goes, you know, she went up to the race yeah. with me and she's yeah. like, you're going to run in this. Like it was, I'm talking horrendous conditions. I had <laughs> never <laughs> been in anything like that. So the race actually got canceled. So the race director uh, was there at the start, but yeah. I was ready to go. I didn't care. There was a yeah. friggin' it, it was pouring and like just coming sideways. And I'm like, wow. whatever, you know, I can right? run this. So he canceled it and he said, you yeah. know, we'll contact you all and, and we'll have it again later this year. So yeah. I, we get home and it's still raining. And I'm like, well, I'm going to run a marathon today. So I got in my car <laughs> and I had did this loop. So I knew that I could do like, a 20 mile loop and a six mile loop. So I drove a 20 mile loop to figure out that part of it. And then the 6.2 mile loop, I already knew because I would run that. I just didn't want to run in a circle a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. So I, my mom's like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> I said, I'm going to run a marathon. I'm, I was supposed to run a marathon today. So yeah, yeah. as you can see, my kind of personality, <laughs> so yeah, I went out and did it. So then a few months later, we have the marathon and now the weather's better and all that. And yeah. so I had been reading up and it was like, you got to carry a water bottle. And I'm like, yeah. oh God, how many, you know, there's, you know, and I had no clue there wasn't going to be water like every mile, you know, it's like, I, I realized it's going to be on a trail. So it's going to be different. Yeah. yeah. So I had to go out and buy like a waste bottle thing. And, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so, and I learned real quick about trail running, how there is nothing out there in these races. So the organization. Yeah. Yeah. Can, that put it on they had like they, a box of cookies and water jugs like at six miles and then at oh, another gosh. six <laughs> mile yeah it, and it was two like you know loops of 13 mm. miles and i was wow. just like oh my god yeah. this is hard like i hadn't trained on any hills <laughs> yeah, like yeah. and this was in the marin headlands and it's like you know climbing ladders descending like rocky trails and yeah, i, yeah, and yeah. I yeah. fell in love i was like this is crazy but i like this you know mm -hmm. so i yeah. So then I was running multiple marathons and then there was some that were on a weekend back to back. So I yeah. started doing a lot of this organization's trail marathons. And yes. I think I did like San Jose or one of those other ones. And the next day was one of his trail ones. So I did it and I was, you know, and then I started hearing people talk about ultras and I was like, what the heck is that? I'm like, how far is that distance? Yeah. And they're like 50 K, but I'm like, I don't know what a 50 K like, yeah. how far is that? Like in more, you know, miles. And they're like 31. And I was like, well, I'm running like 26, almost 27 yeah. miles. Like I could totally do 31. So later that year, I found like convenient one home and I trained on the course and I actually ran the whole course before I even did it. So I was like, I got to see if I can go 31 miles. Yeah, <laughs> so I yeah, even yeah. Tra in training, I went out and I did the, the whole course. So I knew I would is what I was in for, but, uh, on. Okay. Please see, uh, are you there, Kim? Yeah, I'm here. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe coffee. In and out. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, thank you, sir. Um, where's she at? Location. Maybe the, the storm they're having. Yeah. See there if it go. comes. Okay. Can you hear her? Yeah, uh, sure. Her or oh, I can't even run. I like it. and I'm dehydrated, and I feel like yeah. I'm gonna throw up. Yeah. And yeah. so, anyways, I made it to the finish, and I decided to sign up for a fifty miler. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So I just kept, I progressed like that within, yeah. within five months, four, four months of running my first 50 K I did a 50 mile, two 50 milers. And then I jumped up to a hundred miler, oh, dang. So, <laughs> oh, man. but I didn't know, I didn't know anybody that ran. So I didn't know any better. I was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I did, you know, growing up, my father 
had watched Western States 100 on TV and he yes. sat me down one time to watch that. Yes. And so I knew in my head, like once I started this ultra marathoning thing, oh. I'm like, oh no, you have to run a hundred miles. That's like what the yeah. ultra marathon it really yeah. is that show yeah. you used to watch, yeah. you know, you watched yeah. on wide world of sports. Yeah. Back yeah. In, yeah. You know, yeah. the early eighties. And so I'm like, oh man, I got to do a hundred. So <laughs> my second 50 miler was horrendous. Yeah. Another huge storms up in Napa. And, yeah. you know, the boyfriend at the time, he's like, you're going to run that in this. And I go, yeah, I'm going to run in this. It's, <laughs> the race isn't canceled. I'm going for it. Yeah, yeah. So I told myself in that race, I'm like, if you can get through this, Mm-hmm. and not you know because they were offering everybody they could drop down after you did the 50k loop you could yeah. totally you didn't yeah. have to do the 50 mile or you can yeah. get credit and i was like oh no i'm doing the 50 miler yeah, and yeah. i'm gonna sign up for 100 miler so i have to have to do this yeah. so i finished and i was like okay i'm signing up for a yeah. 100 miler and yeah. went from there and then that was all a complete disaster it's all learning you know yeah, yeah that definitely. was all my uphill you know it was yeah. like absolutely i just you know kept kept challenging myself you know it's like some people they they do other things when they get sober they find other sports or maybe you know take up golf or whatever but no it's like I am that personality that's like I gotta do stuff that really really challenges me and people are constantly asking me now because now I'm really 200 is my favorite distance so that's (laughs) like all yeah I'm all about that's insane (laughs) And it sounds crazy when you say that number, people don't, and I have to try to break it down for people. So it's easier than running a hundred, believe it or not, because you're not running as fast as you would in a hundred in a 200, a Mm. 200 basically is, you know, you're going to, unless you're the elite, like people that are winning, they still nap, you know, a little bit, a few miles here and there. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 Oh, wait, you know, I do really well in 200s, but mm. I have a strategy and it's all about like making sure you get some sleep because yeah. that will help you to go faster later. Yeah. You know, if you're going, you know, the first few times I was like, just not no, no sleep yeah. strategy and falling asleep on my feet. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. this isn't working. So my strategy is always like, I, I go to a hundred miles because that's yeah. normally I can run a hundred miles and not need sleep. So in yeah. a hundred, I mean, in a 200, you're not running at your hundred mile pace. Yeah. So yeah. like, for instance, Bigfoot is my next 200 and that's in Washington. And that's like the most wow. brutal course out of even a hundred mile race that oh, I wow. run. Wow. Wow. Uh, Mount St. Helens erupted. So you got all these big rocks and sharp rocks that you're running on. And so you have to even I, in that race, I even take it easier than the other two two hundreds that I do during the year, because it's just so brutal in the beginning. And then you got to make sure that you have your strength to to go through the night in that one. So it it usually 38 to 42 hours for a hundred miles for me to get to that that time in yeah. the race and normally on a course like that i would finish in like 34 hours but you're yeah. scaling it back that much because you're stopping you're eating at so yeah. when you get to an aid station you're like especially later on in the beginning i can just yeah. do whatever nutrition that i always carry with me yeah. but by the time you're getting to mile 50 you are sitting down and they're like okay what would you like because they don't have everything laying out you want yeah. a vegan burger they'll make me a big vegan patty if you eat meat they'll make you a hamburger yeah. or a hot dog yeah. or whatever yeah. so yeah. everybody that comes in they're not like yeah. jamming out of there unless they have a crew and they're going to win so most of yeah. us are like oh yeah we got to get our nutrition now because yeah. now we're going into the night yeah. so we're gonna yeah. not be to the next aid station until mile 20 yeah. and that's what people don't understand like Think about that. You got to go to the next aid station, 20 miles. So yeah. that's going to take roughly depends on what section of the course mm-hmm. you're on, but six to eight and a half, nine hours to yeah. go that section, that amount of time. So you're, you got to sit and eat because I, I survive on like gels and my, um, mm-hmm. tailwind nutrition, which has a lot of calories mm-hmm. when I'm in between the aid stations. So aid stations, I eat like a yeah. thousand calories, 1200 calories. And then I go and eat, you know, hundred calories an hour and then get to the aid station and eat again. So you're slowing down. And then with the sleep um, plan, I always do three hours when I get okay. to mile 100. Yes. So I, and they have sleep stations, sleep tents. Yes. 
Um, and some of the other races, I do use a crew and I sleep in the back of my vehicle, but this one is just so, so remote. I don't want anybody to have to drive these roads out there in the middle of nowhere. So I just sleep at the sleep station and I'll okay. do a three hour. And then like mile 160 ish, I'll probably take another two hours. And the, any other okay. time I want to take a nap, if I get tired, I sleep on the trail. I set my my mm. phone and it wakes me up. And oh, it's wow. funny because I'll, if I do like a 10 or 15 minute oh. nap, I always wake up before the phone goes off and I feel refreshed. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Ask anybody that runs these. I mean, yeah, a 10 yeah, minute yeah. dirt nap yeah. and you're like, okay, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And you would think people get afraid. They're like, I don't want to sleep because then I'm going to get stiff. But the reality is you really don't. You're, your body yeah. is recovering when you sleep and then you go yeah. again. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're actively recovering and eating and mm-hmm. more so than you would in a hundred. That's why I'm saying it's easier because in a hundred, you're just, yeah. you're not eating like you would in a 200 and you're just yeah. pushing harder. Yeah. So yeah. this to me, I always say, if you have done any kind of backpacking at a fast rate, like doing 25, 30 miles a day mm-hmm. with a backpack on, this is what it is. You know, okay. this is, it's, it's okay. a form of fast packing, backpacking and those type yeah. of people do well. I've had a friend who's done all the like Appalachian yeah. Yeah. PCT and the triple crown of those. And he doesn't, he, he runs too, but he did Tahoe the last time they had Tahoe yeah. and he finished ahead of me and he was purposely not going to run any of it. And that's yeah. how if efficient he is with his hiking, oh, man. Yeah. he's like, catcher, wow. I did not run a step. And he wow. finished three and a half hours ahead of me <laughs> because uh, he's so fast at hiking. So, and it's, and I tell people, yeah. you got to train, to hike fast to do yeah. a 200 if you're just okay. the average person. Cause when you get there, the first year I did the triple crown, mm-hmm. I didn't train to hike like yeah. I do now. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, I was just like racked. And then the last time I did the triple crown, oh, I yeah. trained to be very efficient on the hiking. Cause it was so slow. Yeah, 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 the first yeah. year I was like, everybody was passing me and I'm like, God, I, I do a lot of hills, but I, I, I didn't train to yeah. hike to speed yeah, hike yeah, yeah, yeah. and I would try to run but you're running at a slow pace uphill and I'm like okay I'm gonna train to be like just swinging my arms yeah. and using H- my energy hiking is be- like different muscles oh it, it, it is yeah, yeah, yeah. so now I'm less sore because I train yeah. okay. in the mountains going up 11,000 like I was up Whitney last week that was my yeah. training I'm like 4,505 feet 14,505 feet I'm gonna hike as fast as I can up it and then we'll run down yeah you know and that's what I do so but I was with somebody that had it altitude issues everybody i bring up there has altitude yeah, issues yeah. i'm like oh yeah i forget you guys are coming so, from sea yeah. level <laughs> yeah so okay. but yeah hiking definitely yeah. uses different muscles okay. so you got to be more efficient yeah so yeah. awesome yeah um, at um at what point or specific race in your running career did you realize that you were just like meant for ultras and trail running and everything? I think doing my first hundred, yeah. I just knew it was in me. I just knew yeah. I wanted to just keep going. Yeah. Like where is the limit, you know? And yeah. I, you know, fast pack 424 miles. I've run, you know, 400 miles in a stretch, you know, taking sleep breaks, doing uh-huh. like a and trends crewing me 300 mile lines. It's like, what's the limit? You know, it's like, I, you know, I've done the 10 day races and finished 500 miles. It's like, you yeah. know, there is no limit <laughs> like what your human yeah. ability is. It's, yeah. And it's more of a mental thing. So you can train oh. your body physically, yeah. Yeah. but the, the part that gets you to that finish and to push past the pain and suffering yeah. is yeah. up here. You got to remain better. positive. Yeah. So, and cause I watched so many people yeah. in these two hundreds that are new and they're dropping yeah. out or I'm like, you're dropping out. What? Like, well, my, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I get people to leave aid stations. If I see them, I go, let's go to the next one. They're like, but it's yeah. 20 miles. I go, it doesn't matter. Just start walking. Like yeah, yeah. then make your decision, yeah. you know, then you decide mm-hmm. if you really are that bad, then and you, you, half of the time people continue on just yeah. because they don't know that their mental state, when you're tired and you haven't slept or, yeah. you know, and I'll, and I'll say mm-hmm. that you're, you're not thinking, take a nap. You're mm-hmm. not thinking, mm-hmm. go for a sleep break, wake up in an hour and see where you're at. Yeah. You know? It's like, of course I want to quit, but I know I'm like, no, you, you're going to be fine. In three hours, you're going to be like, Oh, that was stupid. Why did you know? Cause yeah. it's your mind that <laughs> yeah. you get tired yeah. and you're it's like, yeah, games. this is. You know, and when people yeah. start 
complaining, oh, this is so hard. And it's like, don't, you paid money to be here. Yeah, it's hard. That's why we're here. <laughs> we want to challenge. You want something to be hard to challenge you. Yeah. You know, you don't want to do easy. I mean, I don't want to do easy. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, we run and we don't, you know, that's the difference between somebody that just wants to do it to keep in shape, which is awesome. People yeah. just want to yeah. do it. You know, they do their five yeah. miles a day yeah. and that's perfect. And they just don't want to, that's not their desire. You know, their yeah, desire yeah. is to remain healthy for the kids or for their he- yeah, health. Yeah. But that's a difference. It's like, no, I want to keep challenging myself as yeah, long definitely. as I can. I'm only here one time and it's like, I'm 56 and I'm still going and I'm still wanting to challenge myself. Cause I know one day, yeah. like all of a sudden, maybe I'll get an injury and I won't be able to run or, yeah. you know, God forbid, but at some point, I mean, I hope I can do this till I'm 80. Yeah, <laughs> and I, see them, I see them out there. I see people in their seventies. That was just I, that bad water at yep. the finish line. And uh, yeah. they had like three, seven plus years old. So I'm finished this year, but yeah. I want to be that person. Like one of yeah. those women, like showing yeah. up like this woman that's 91, just finished a hundred mile race in England. She has wow. like, Ooh, sh- yeah. Like, yeah. really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. that is amazing yeah. that is who i yeah. want to be i yeah, strive to be that person you know yeah, yeah definitely you know yeah so yeah. those kind of people because people will say who you know who inspires you i'm like people that are in their 70 plus uh, age group yeah. still getting after it and you don't see yeah. them complaining i see these same yeah. people yeah. like a lot of them do the multi-day because they can just go yeah. with yeah. multiple miles and still yeah. get 100 and 200 yeah. miles in and yeah. Yeah. can't finish a 200 mile or 100 mile race and right amount of time but i'm like it doesn't matter it, it's so much harder for somebody that age group to push themselves and to keep going just to walk and you know yeah. and it's like that's yeah. amazing i want to be yes. doing that so yeah th- that's Absolutely. what inspires me you know it's Absolutely. like we should all look at them you know yeah. especially that woman 91 in england and she's still getting after these hundreds yeah, 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 and yeah. she has i want to say three I know Ed the Jester's try just broke her record and she yeah. got one ahead of him. But yeah. she's been doing this for a long time. And so yeah. she's like at 200 and 600 mile runs. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody can, should complain. They, 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 they <laughs> I'm too old when I hear people say that. I'm I like, ah, you're blocking, you're putting a wall up, you know, when you're saying you're yeah. too old. Yeah. You're never too old. I, meet people all the time that have read my book and they're like i'm in my 50s other women they're like you know what you made me realize i always thought no i could never do a marathon or ultra i'm I'm, you know in my 50s but you know what you're right i can Mm -hmm. i if i want to i can absolutely yeah um another one so you have been brave enough to share your stories of your past which i know Mm -hmm. is is not easy and Um, you've gone through a lot of struggles, like you said, through your drug addiction and eating disorders and Mm -hmm. sexual and emotional abuse. What keeps you motivated and strong, um, like to carry you through your past? I don't let my past define who I am and I don't Mm -hmm. let that take over me. Those, I always look at things like, well, I was, you know, things are supposed to happen in your life in order for you to grow as this yes. person and be who you're going to be. Absolutely. Like yes. nobody would know who I, who I was if I didn't do any or nothing, you know, in my past yes. was part of me because I wouldn't have had to get sober. I wouldn't have had to learn to love myself, you know, and with the eating disorder and mm-hmm. all of that and getting past that trauma of being sexually abused. It's like, you grow from that and then you yeah. teach others because that's what it's all about. You show yes. other women, you can be strong and you can overcome mm-hmm. that. And don't, you have to let go of those things in the past because a lot of people that don't, they, they, they stay stuck in life, mm-hmm. you know? And it's yeah. like, there's women like me and other women that have been through that. We need to tell our story because we're able to, you know, not everybody can share their story because of yeah. what they do for a living or yeah. the, to share with other females and males come to me all the time and saying they've had the yeah. same past I've had. Mm-hmm. And so I love that I've been able to touch people and, and it helps me to yes. make me keep wanting to do more, you know, yeah. and sharing and, and motivating other people to, mm-hmm. you know, 
otherwise we just stay stuck and and that's yeah. no way to live your life it's yeah. so i mean it was very hard it wasn't an easy yeah you know yeah. thing to go through but you know once i just let go of all of that yeah. it's like you start healing and that's the yeah. most important thing you got to you need to heal so you don't have these open wounds all the time and and stay stuck we're only here one time and it's just like you see people that are stuck and they're they're just living their life like mm. because they can't get to that that place or that space yeah. or get that help so you know in, and just by telling ways, my story i hope that helps others you know in a lot of ways do you feel like it made you stronger a stronger person i, I think i think so i never would have considered myself a strong person growing up i was yeah, yeah. such a little girly girl and, and, and <laughs> afraid of everything like i was I was afraid to die. It was just like weird stuff mm. in my head when I was a little kid growing up mm. that I would freak out and start crying about. My parents are like, what is yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't want to die. And they're like, you're not dying. There's nothing mm. wrong with you, but just, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and, and I didn't like getting dirty and I hated trails. Like I was happy my mom was alive to see me go through all this transition because yeah. she yeah. was like, I cannot believe like you are that same person, you know? Yeah. Wow. But you know, yeah. and it's People like, make it changes. Does, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, as we grow, you know, you look back and you're like, it's so funny, you know, things like that I would have never done. And it's, it's part of growth. Yeah. yeah. And part yeah. of becoming who you are meant to be as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think for that, it is part of your testimony um, to, to the world, you know, <laughs> and help people that to, to relate that, and she went through that and she able to overcome it, you know, she, they yeah. could do it. They could do also. Yep. Um, um I kind of leave it to the next question. You probably kind of already answered that in some kind of way. Um, so how have your past more to you? Have you become the person that you are today? It just, I mean, like I was saying before, it, yeah. it you, yeah, I kind of answered it. Like yeah. have to get sober having to have a structure, go to these meetings, go to yeah. therapy, yeah. helped me with my running, bringing me yeah. like to, to have discipline yeah. and being strong to be able to do what I want to do in life. And I think yeah. it just mentally, it made me a stronger and a more confident running actually really mm. that gave me confidence yeah. Yeah. to do, you know, I had no confidence. That's why I was in horrible relationships and all of that. Yeah. So running has definitely helped me become very confident as a woman. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now I see that. I mean, you you accomplished many, many things during your running career. You know, many like races. You know, um, being the first. You know, all that. So, what's the races that you haven't done that on your bucket list to do? Ah, uh, what would I like to do that I haven't done? Now, I'd like to race in Europe. I haven't done a lot of, okay. like, I'd like to race in different countries, not necessarily. There's a race that I want to do that's a 300 mile race oh. in Europe. And I forget the name of it. It's on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of it, but I would like to do that one. Okay. So I, I want to start, you know, now that things are opening up. Yeah, and actually, yeah. my yeah. book was translated in German. So Germany, nice. they want to invite me out to German, Germany awesome. to do some races. So I've been looking at yeah, yeah. like 100 there. So. And I want to race in New Zealand. I mean, there's many okay. places that I've been yeah. invited to. So now okay. that's my next that's goal. Get, cool. Yeah, get this yeah. stuff done that I want to do this year and then get yeah. back out there. And then actually next year, I want to go back out on the Pacific Crest Trail again because I yeah, got yeah, yeah, yeah. 200, you know, less than 500 miles from finishing yeah. it. Yeah. Had a bell out if you read my book. So yeah. I'm like, I think I need to do it again because I've been helping yeah, so yeah. many hikers because they our yeah. Bishop is a hiker town. town yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. They come yeah, in absolutely. to resupply. Okay. So I'm just like, I think I need, people are like, why don't you just go the part you missed? And I'm like, no, I want to start the whole thing again, but I will, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I definitely yeah. want to start going to Europe. I want to, okay. this is my last year of my triple crown of two hundreds. I okay. told the race director, Candace, I want to help at her races, yeah. but I don't want to do all of the same races again. I want to start okay, going, different. you know, cause yeah, you yeah. only live once and definitely, it's like, I want to get traveling definitely. now. So yeah. Yeah. Well, if you do do the PCT, definitely um, want to go to more. I mean, to marathon to sob. People don't really. <laughs> so I was going to say, if you, do, if you do do the PCT and you start from the start, start, like, yep, the border camp. Yeah. I'm like, that's like, 
not far from us. You let us know. Yeah. Oh, fine. for sure. Yeah, you guys can yeah. bring me to the start. I'll spend the night there and then take oh, off. Yeah. That is that's yeah. literally yeah. like a 40 minute drive for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. perfect. No, seriously. Yeah, I gotta. <laughs> so in January or February, I think they open up the permit process. So I gotta see okay. when I can get the yeah. permit for. So I wanna start probably may i was going to do coca 250 yeah. so i have yeah. to start after that <laughs> yeah so that'll be my 200 for next year that i'm doing because okay nice yeah so it'll be probably mid-may but i will keep you guys posted for sure yeah so yeah, but yeah, yeah. I definitely want to start racing out yeah. of the country more yeah, you know yeah. and i've been to china okay. so i've been to morocco right. so i definitely want to like go to france go yeah, to, yeah. i'd like to go to italy i'm half italian and i like to go to ireland too yeah, yeah, yeah. so Want to? I want to go everywhere, so I guess hey, I will just not? have to go there right? and work my way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, kind of what you touched on a little bit. What is on your race agenda for the rest of the year? What races do you have so, coming up? So I'm doing what's called the Triple Crown of 200s mm -hmm. for my okay. third time, and no, me and another guy did it twice, but now I'll be the only person going for the third Triple Crown. Right. So Please. yeah. And I'll be going for, so it's uh, Bigfoot 200 yeah. in Washington, yeah. uh -huh. Tahoe 200, and then Moab 240. And so I've yes. got every single Moab too. Me and one other guy are going for a five-year finish mm -hmm. on that. Nice. So I'm doing those. I'm doing, um, I want, I'm going, I try to squeeze in an FKT on the Tahoe Rim Trail. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm going to do what's called. <laughs> because I, there's no way the last time I've done it in 72 hours, but it's mm. like, you know, I, I want to do it unsupported. So mm. I would have uh, a couple resupply drops. So I'll just be basically fast packing style and try to do 30 miles a day. Yeah. And so I'll go, I'll start in Tahoe city and go mm -hmm. clockwise. And then when I end up back there, then I'll go counterclockwise. Okay. So, and I, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's 175 miles each way. So. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Uh tries that it that's amazing as an fk chair <laughs> and then i'm doing uh 100 and 11 there and there's another 200 in november possibly they're not for sure if they're gonna have it on orcas island in washington so i'll do that if they mm -hmm. have it mm -hmm. and i'll be doing uh quad dipsy which is a it's a local race in san francisco that i've done mm -hmm. multiple times so it's on the dipsy trail but it 28 miles and I'll be going for my 23rd finish. So Ooh. yeah, I've done that every year since I started doing ultras. So it was canceled obviously last yeah. year. So I'll be doing that. And then my race at the end of the year will be, uh, across the years, 10 day in Arizona. So yeah. we'll see. I would like yeah. to do 600 miles. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Oh my God. It's a one mile loop. you guys. Yeah, so yeah. it's very, yeah. very okay. hard to like, do. Oh yeah. My gosh, yeah. 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 That, I gotta, I gotta mine. come up with this. Yeah. And yeah, I gotta yeah. have a good yeah. sleep strategy where I can okay. run more <laughs> yeah, 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 and not yeah. like, just like march around. Yeah. Like, but I watched, like, again, we were talking about the older people in their eighties. Yeah, I know. They I don't know. come off the freaking course. They're still going. <laughs> like, I just remember yeah, yeah. the last time I did it two years ago, this woman yeah. in her late sixties, I was yeah. like, she doesn't run, but she walks and she's like, every yeah. time I'd stop to sleep, she would go all night. And I'm like, wow, I got, I can't even sleep because I don't want her to pass me. Man. <laughs> I wanted to still place well. So yeah, I got to come up with a good strategy and, yeah. and I don't know how they just keep going. Like they huh. just keep going. I'm Man. like, huh. <laughs> so that'll be my last race of the year. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, what is your boundless motivation or thoughts in a few words? Ah, oh. my motivational thoughts. Yeah. Just, just keep going. Keep going. Just keep going. That's simple. Yeah. Just yeah. keep oh. putting one foot in, um, I guess be brave and keep going. That's like one going. of my favorite mottos. I actually have that tattooed on me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be brave and keep going. So be just, brave. if you're brave enough, you could just keep doing what you want to do in life, you know, and yeah. you just got to be yeah. brave and not, not be afraid to try things. I mean, okay. you're only here once. Like I always tell yes. people, you can't yeah. just, 
like, how do you want to live? I mean, if that's how you want to live, great. But it's like, do you, I, I, I want to leave here where people will say, oh my God, she did everything she wanted to do. You know, it's like, I want to be remembered like that to just go out and do what you can do. I mean, I understand people have kids and all that. Like at some point when the kids get older, you can do more, you know, it's like, I didn't have kids. So that's, why I can do a lot of what I do. I have my yeah. dogs and that's it. But, you know, so I'm able, I'm very fortunate. So I take advantage of what I can do in life, but you can work around it and, and do yeah. things and, you know, have wow. your family, you know, like yeah. I watch, I have been following a lot of the PCT hikers and a lot yeah. of people are van lifers, you know, yeah. since, yeah. since uh, with the COVID. And so yeah, yeah. there's been some women that have like three kids and their yeah. husband and yeah. they're following, they're following them in the van. So they, you know, the bigger sections yeah. like the, the Sierra, they were by themselves for, you know, mm-hmm. 200 miles, mm-hmm. but they're able to meet them almost every day or yeah, a yeah, couple yeah. of days. So yeah. it's like, I love that they're, they're having their family as part of what they're doing oh, too, yeah. and be, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. be fortunate to be able to do that. Yeah. And I see people at races, you can get your kids involved. Kids love like helping yeah, out at the yeah, aid yeah. station. Mm-hmm. You see people come out and the kids, that's like, kids are totally into it wanting to ring the bell or yeah, what do yeah, you yeah, need? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I see yeah, families yeah. bring their kids out working these aid stations while yeah. the spouse is running mm-hmm. and the, yeah, yeah. the other one is working the aid with the kids. And so it's just like getting yeah. kids more involved in that. Yeah. I bring, I bring yeah. my kids to the aid stations when uh-huh. we're, uh, when I'm not running and I'm uh-huh. volunteering. They yeah. Out. And you guys work them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, like it. That's awesome. No, that's great. I mean, that's a fun thing. Kids absolutely love it because they feel like they're doing yeah. something. Yeah. They're like helping the runners, you know, yeah. and we appreciate it. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely ways of getting it done. I interviewed some people who got family, who got kids, and some of the, the, the most elite runners, you know. And yeah. I'm just so for Pacific, just the, the, the lady went bad water 135, Sally Marie. Sally yeah, Sally. I might interview her. She's amazing. Early this year, two kids, a husband. Yeah, she's able amazing. To, she's able to do what she can do and continue to do it. And, yep. uh, and just raising her kids, her family. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's, it's, it's amazing. And um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so definitely. Yeah, shout out to Sally. <laughs> yes, she's amazing. I met her at her first ultra. Oh, wow. <laughs> American River. Yeah, she had been messaging me, asking me questions. And this is. Yeah. A million years ago, her kids were like toddlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I always feel old. I'm like, oh my God, her kids were like, one of them, the little boy was like a baby, wow. you know? So yeah, so I remember that when she did American River. Hers are oh, first oh, 50 miler yeah. many that's years awesome. ago. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love, <laughs> yeah, so it's weird. I, I watch people's kids grow up. I'm like, yeah. wait. I know. <laughs> like, I know. They're, and the kids are me- messaging me now. They're like, I'm <laughs> doing my first ultra. They're running with their parents. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. wow, yeah. God, I remember you working at aid stations yeah. when you were a little kid. Yeah. So it's a, it's amazing yeah, to see that yeah. like now the their mm-hmm. kids are even doing ultras yeah. or running, you know, yeah. on cross yeah. country or whatever. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So after all of this, you know, all the running you've done, the life that you live in, oh, well, I got a guy, I want to put one more question in. What have brought you the great joy so far during this whole time? Just being able to live the life that I was meant to live. And yeah. my dogs, of course. Yeah, the dogs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, wiener yeah. dogs. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Truman, you know, it's like Truman. when yeah. I adopted him almost nine years ago, he was six and a half and never did. I thought a wiener dog could run like him, you know, <laughs> five fifty K's. And I always use the Truman defense. I'm like, when people are like, oh, I could never do an ultra. I'm like, look, yeah. if I have Truman with me, I'm like, you're inch late, five fifty K's. There's yeah. no excuse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, just having, you know, rescuing these guys and just giving them a great home. And like mm. I said, my intentions was mm. never to make him be an ultra runner. He's mm. ran, I don't force him. And mm. I mean, he's retired now. Yeah. He's 15 and a half, but he still gets wow. out every day, three to five miles on his little trot. And we have and Baxter now fun. who's yeah. Baxter's two and he yeah. will do his yeah. first ultra in the next year. And he oh, loves wow. Mount. He's a mountain dog. Oh, oh wow. my God. That guy wow. loves Cause he has long fur. And so he doesn't, yeah, yeah. the heat, he doesn't okay. like Truman can handle heat. Yeah, Baxter yeah. doesn't, but Baxter yeah, loves yeah, yeah, like yeah. going into the creeks and going wow. into the lakes <laughs> and yeah. going up yeah, the mountain cool. passes. And people are just like, Oh my God, poor dog. And I always have to say, no, he's not a poor dog. He was a poor dog when he came from the 96 dog 
hoarder who left him outside to die with a bunch of Mm. other, you Mm. know, uh, backyard breeding situation. I go, that's when he was a poor dog. Now he's not a poor dog. And they're just like, Oh, you're right. (laughs) I go, he, he wants to do it. I don't force him. Yeah, yeah. He loves it. I mean, he runs ahead of me. I'm like, wait oh, wow. for me. That's, that <laughs> right. is, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. So yeah. yes, rescuing dogs. So I'm on, yes. I'm on the lookout for a, a female wiener dog. I want to get a little uh-huh. girl now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause Truman's getting older and Baxter needs yeah. somebody to play with. Cause yeah. Truman just attacks Baxter, even though he has oh. no teeth. He's just very <laughs> bossy. <laughs> Truman's like eight pounds, eight and a half pounds. And Baxter's like, 13 and a half and he, he just rolls over he's like truman is the boss but he needs <laughs> he needs somebody to play with yeah, so can, okay. no, no, no. yeah. Your, your fur babies yeah no, 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 plus no. i have a little girl dog i can dress her up cute <laughs> i've always had boy dogs and i'm like i can make some cute little outfits for her <laughs> okay right. oh, awesome. yeah but, yeah. but it, by that time we, we hook up we got to talk about your outfit more you know your, your colorful outfit and then that's yes <laughs> Hopefully I get to see you in person the next time. Yes, for yeah. sure. Well, yeah, yeah, at yeah. some point when I'm in that San Diego area, I'm sure I will be out that way. Who knows? Okay. There's many ultras out that way. So. Oh, yes. Yes. It's a definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. cool. Well, well, yeah. But thank you for, for, I mean, thank you for your time. You yeah, know? no problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. Yes. So. Uh, and also thank you, Kim, once again. You know, of course. You know, and just, um, uh, for, for, for joining me as my co-host and, and the rest of live from Bowler family, you know, for uh, and just like to, yeah, thank you, uh Katra, the dirt diva, but just for joining for sharing your journey of becoming the woman you are today. And you thank know, you. I know we could talk some more, you know, but um, uh, but definitely you know, I know you got a lot of running you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> you still got a lot of running in me, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, 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 so definitely. And so, um, but yes, and thank you, family. And you know, but hold before I say that. So, Catcher, you got anything? If people want to get in contact with you, want to reach out to you, how would they do that? Yes, I am on uh, Instagram, Dirt Diva 333. Okay. I'm on Facebook under Catcher Corbett. Okay. And um, they can, if they want to go on my website, they could order their book, my book directly for me. And I do autographs and okay. Truman will do a potograph too okay. as well. Oh, so they can go to, yeah, it's catracorbett.com, C-A-T-R-A-C-O-R-B-E-T-T.com. And they can order directly for me if they want to get a copy of okay. my book. Okay. Thank you for that. Awesome. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. Yes. And so Kim, in the last word, you want to leave on Kim? Um, no, I'm, I'm super stoked to be able to um help interview you Katra you're you're super you. inspirational Aww. and awesome just a badass woman overall thank and, you I appreciate uh, it <laughs> yeah no no for sure like I, I really hope one day on the trails we get to we get to actually meet that would be super awesome yes. well when I get ready for them so. right. cool for sure. I'll, I'll come out there for you guys uh, starting <laughs> <laughs> oh that's yeah. awesome yeah for yeah. sure yes all right. Awesome. So thank you for that. And thank you, family, for joining me on another episode of the Live Run Fowler's show. Live a life beyond the boundary you set on yourself. And Katra, the dirt diva, have, have put her boundaries, have put your limits, have test her limits. And she continues to do it to this day. And truly uh, not take it a life that she have for granted. So, so thank you for that thing, for setting that example for us to, to follow. You're welcome. Thank you. And until next time, family.